Good evening, friends. It's Alexor again with the updated 4 build, which is actually very different than it was before. Plays the entire thing a little bit differently, but this is the God of Thunder, right? Even though it doesn't, sometimes just doesn't proc, as you can tell. Where are my Thunderbolts? Because it's a chance, right? It's a chance to become 4. Or just right click it. Like in this case, see the Thunderbolts raining from the sky? That is our 4 build. It's a little bit different because we're not using um, Lightning Strike anymore, but instead we're using the Static Orb orbiting us and thus creating our beams of lightning. I've gone with this because it's much easier to play than the lightning. It does eat a lot of mana, as you can tell, and then put your focus back up. So let me just explain to you how this, how this is played. You basically jump into people and then you hit your Q, right? You just cast your static orbs with extra orbs on it. Sometimes, like whenever you hear you crit the enemy, or you are being crit, this also works by the way, then you have an 8% chance depending on your item, I think 6 to 9% on casting a Meteor. Meteor is converted into the Thunderbolt coming from this one, see this. So it's basically, you can tell it's Meteor down here, but it actually casts the Thunderstorm bolts thingies. By chance, if you crit. So yeah, it's, uh, a lot of things have to, to come together for this to happen. But this is not a super OP build, it's more of a fun build. It is still strong, this is 100 corruption, it's not insane. But it can do most of the content just fine. And especially if you cast down uh, the Meteor by hand. It does insane damage. Really insane. You can shred bosses, nemesis, whatever, in, in seconds. It was a mistake. But, um, yeah, that's what you do. You have your evasive mechanism of this, the flame rush, which also gives you less damage taken, so damage reduction, basically. And you will be running out of mana a lot. So for this you have the focus, which also reduces damage taken while you are channeling like this. While you are in this channel focus state, you take less damage. And you also have the flame ward, which is also auto cast on stun, but this is also additional survivability. And because the sorcerer is still squishy. So yeah, that's pretty much it. But that's what you do. You keep your spark charges up, <clears throat> or static charges, whatever it's called. And you just cast down the fire, the thunderbolts, like good old Thor, pretty much. We don't have a hammer, sadly, it would be good if we had a hammer, but we don't. So let's look at the items, right? The one you really, actually you need... You, to make this really work at higher corruption, as you can tell, this was 100, it was easy. This can easily go to 200, I'm sure. If you want to run at higher corruption, you do need four items, really. You definitely need this, because this converts media to lightning. Right? You do more lightning damage, more mana, shock duration, etc. Less spell mana cost. So this is absolutely necessary. This one, not so much, but it helps a lot. Plus one to lightning spells, lightning pen, eight intelligence, shock chance per int, and especially if you have to set, you gain plus one spell lightning damage per int. That's a lot, actually. That's 72 or something. Like in my case. You also have increased spell damage. So both of these... Somewhat useful, actually, for this build. And you do kind of need the hubbing of stars. You see the third one from the top is 8% chance to cast Meteor on crit if above zero mana. But this is basically what auto-casts the Meteor, or the Thunderstorm in this case. Um, you don't need it, but then you have to cast it by hand with your right click. This is sort of what makes it a little bit smoother when you're just running through the echoes and you're just hitting your Q and you have the orbs circling you. Um, this makes it a little bit smoother. I would run it without it, let's put it that way. And you need the Twisted Heart of Eukeros. Now this is somewhat tough to get, I know. You have to kill the Emperor of Corpses and he's a bitch at dropping it, sadly. But the key thing is this. 7% of your health, current health converted to Ward when you directly cast a Necrotic spell, we don't care. But the same is true for Elemental spells. So basically whenever we cast a spell, we lose a little bit of health. But it is converted to Ward. Right? As you can tell, we, we eat a little bit of damage here. 
But it is a percentage, so it doesn't really ever go below 50%, rarely. So that's sort of a break-even point, but you do gain ward from it. And you, since you're constantly casting spells, this buffs your health up a lot. Also, you gain more cast speed, plus one to elemental spells, and strength with armor and increased health. But it's just all very great to help keep us alive, because the sorcerer is still squishy. So he needs these kind of things, right? So you kind of need all four of them. You also need at least plus three to media in one of the, the body armors you have. You don't need it, but it makes the media much stronger. So you kind of want to have this maxed out, especially if you go for higher corruption. You, you can do 100 corruption with all, all these crazy things. I guess for 100 corruption, you could do with these two. Just fine. Just these two do, do 100 corruption. Then if you go to 200, you need this and this. And maybe even already this, anything higher, you definitely need it. And then what you do is... Now I have all the resistances set on my items. So you see a lot of this, health, you want to go for health and in wherever you can. Increased area for area skills is great if you have it, because obviously that makes your, your thunderstorm hit a wider area, that's insanely good. Also mana region implicit. Then we have lighting damage, obviously, int, elemental resistances again and block. Physical res, health region, int. So you kind of want to scale with a critical strike chance, you kind of want to have, what the, the things you want to have to scale is crit chance, as high as possible, because more crit means more chance to proc your thunderstorm int and that's it <laughs> you can go for lightning damage but you really want to have crit mostly because the media already does a lot of damage and you are since you are having set items which is sadly the problem you are running out of space to put your affixes on right so if you can go for intelligence that's the easiest one to scale more mana is obviously also in insanely good uh, tier 7 mana is very powerful because you will be running out of mana a lot. But there's actually a lot of things you kind of want to do with this build, and that's a bit of the problem why it's not that strong. You have to look at your mana max mana, you have to look at your mana region, you have to look at all your resistances, you have to look at wall generation, you have to look at lightning damage. This is why this is at best, I would say, an A-tier build. At best. Um, but it's a fun build, right? It's a fun build. We're running fun builds out here. So go for mana. Uh, intelligence, crit chance. And of course, you've got to uh, cap your resistances. With the sorcerer, even more so than with anyone else, because he eats a lot of shit. This is unnecessary. This was because I was trying it with this one, which gives you increased mana region per free uncapped lightning resistance. But it's not that good, actually. I kind of like this. It's also a cheaper build in. But if you have this, you can also run this. If you get a slam like this with plus three to media. Very simple. Now for the idols, um, I throw all the health in it, it's just all health, see, all health, 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 resistances. Now there are, the mage has a bunch of idols that give him more damage. With the sorcerer I really only ran into issues with dying, I didn't really run into issues with damage so far. So um, health is really the key thing, what we needed here. Blessing is pretty much the same thing as always, we go for um, resistances wherever we can. Wait, where is it? Or war decay. In this case, we have all resistances kept already, so I went with... This one is great. Spell damage leashes health from... Um, is it Black Sun? I think it's the Black Sun, right? Did I get this? I'm not sure. Because you do a lot of spell damage, so you're constantly full health. This is especially great with your Twisted Heart of Chaos. It helps a lot. Crit Avoidance. Um, frailty on hit is nice. Endurance thresholds. This is all defense. I always put the blessings into defense, except it's basically all defense, yeah. That's what you want to do with your, with your blessings. Immo. So for all the spells, okay, of course we have our... Uh, actually, I didn't even put all these in there. Interesting. If our static orb, and we go all the way left. You first want to go here. So that is... Oh wait, no, no, this one. Yeah, this one. Orbital fulmination. So it orbits around you. That's what you want. And then you want to go with this fast as well because it's minus 26 mana cost so it goes down to three mana so you can pretty much spam this all the time around you that's what you want these two are key one point into this one point into this and then you can max the other ones and then go down here that's just more damage and chance to uh, chance to gain ward on stun that's about it also shock chance is pretty nice 
and you do more damage to shocked enemies. So you wanna you wanna have this. It's very very simple. It's really nothing crazy. Flame vault as well. It's always the same. Actually, in my case, I always build it the same. Really, you just go with vault granted less damage while it is active, less elemental damage taken, less long on duration. Let me go here with astonish. Automatically cast when you are stunned. And over here for an additional charge. So you actually have two charges for your flame ball. As I said, it's actually pretty much always the same. Flame rush. You want to go down here first to convert it to lightning. Because then later you can turn this fire resistance shred into lightning resistance shred. That's pretty nice. But the key things are these ones. Damage taken, minus 80%. Also doubled against dots. And this lasts a little bit longer after your flame rush ends. Mana efficiency. And of course the shred. So what you want to do is, if you have enemies, you want to flame rush through them like this. Because if you go through them, they gain the fire resistance and the elemental resistance shred. So you do more lightning damage to them. And you also take less damage while you're doing this. So you want to use your flame rush as often as the cooldown is very, cooldown is very short, three seconds. So you can do this a lot, right? It's also not much mana, it's what, 50. So you can really spam your, your guys, then you do your flame rush, go through them, keep spamming them again. And do your flame rush again and that's basically back and forth through the enemies all the time very very strong that's a flame rush then we have to focus again this is sort of when you are spamming down a boss with your media you are out of mana instantly and this brings it back up again super fast so of course you want to increase mana region you want to first actually go to this makes this one wall from burst because after one second actually if we no nah, mistakes made if I spend all my mana here, after one second you'll see there's a burst. Did you see that? There's a burst of mana you get, and sometimes it's enough to just get to this level. <clears throat> so it's basically just all ward. Then down here we have more armor and armor per intelligence. And uh, what was it? Mana region per missing mana. Oh yeah, there it is. All resistance is almost 30% while you are channeling. Very key. So this means you can actually sometimes, it depends on how big the mob is that is chasing you, sometimes you can actually channel while standing in the enemy. Or at least also in front of bosses. That's a key thing with this. Now our main damage dealer, Meteor. Very simple. You go, the first thing you want to go is to here. Mana efficiency 40%, so it's less mana. You're first going to go down all here. Max the mana fall, so it's cheaper, otherwise it's already very expensive. And you go up here. It just means more, they fall faster, they, you have more meteors, yeah, number of meteors, and um, yeah, more of them, but a small area, that's fine. Basically, uh, more thunderbolts, it's not meteors, right? Then you go up here, actually, no, you go down here. With this, you have a chance to recover mana cost, which is also very great, because you want to have it cheap as possible. And then up here, crit steal more damage. You can also go for this. Um... I don't like it. It's really only good if you have a lot of mana. In most cases, we are sitting at 500 here almost, so that's really, really there. So that's a meteor. This is 26, as you can tell from my items. Um, if you can't get to 26, ignore these. And focus definitely on mana, otherwise you can't really work with it. For the passives. The mage... Very simple, you always go with the Arcanist because the resistances are just too nice and the int. Born into this just to get a little bit of 7% damage for free. Increase attack speed and cast speed, you want this for sure. And then uh, put 2 into this to just get there, man and health, that's fine. But then here, increase crit chance 20%, crit multi. You can also think of maxing this later, but the, I think the, others, the other points are better usually. We go to the Sorcerer, you always go for Arcane Momentum, you can always need this with cheap spells. That just makes your uh, cast speed faster, right? If you keep spamming your Q, it gets faster. Int and increase spell crit chance per int. That's all we need, a lot of crit chance. What per second mana, simple. Mana, mana region, simple. Spell damage, wall retention, perfect. Also doubled after a 40 mana spell, which is your Thunderstorm. Lightning damage, shock chance, cool, but we want this. Lightning penetration, 15%, and lightning damage, leech. With this, we don't necessarily need the blessing that gives us the leech from spell crits, but it's nice addition. 
Crit chance, 80%. Like lightning crit chance. No, it's just crit chance, yeah. Uh, spell crit multi. And the Archmage over here, more spell damage. Later, you also want to go for this. Later, we want to put 8 points in this. I'm not even 100 with this, so yeah. Um, especially the 8 points, War Decay Threshold per in plus 5. That's pretty nice. Later gives you even more health. We're not there yet, so we're not doing this. Instead, you go for the Rune Master. Mana, cast speed, mana burst, ward burst. I mean, the ward burst doesn't really happen, so you, it doesn't matter. But uh, because we have nothing that costs zero mana. Um, intelligence, ward gain on direct spell cast, again. Health and ward per second. Additional ward per second with 60, 60 int, which we have. Then you want you actually want to get this one up as soon as possible. Even before these, I would say. You want to get the Cataclysm up. Because crit chance you can get this up to 72, I believe. Pretty good. And then you also put more into this health region, mana region, doubles with over 50 int. So what you do in the past is very simple. You go with your lightning damage, but mostly ward. The sorcerer is squishy. You need to have some survivability. That's why I do ward generation, ward per second, all these shenanigans. But that's your four build. That's the God of Thunder build. That's what it, what it is, what it does. So let me know in the comments what you think of it. If you have any additions to it, if you like it. People enjoyed it from the last season. Now we got it for cycle two. Even better, I think. I think it's even stronger with the static orbs around you. I think this also makes kind of more sense. And I will see you in the next videos. Video. Videos.